Saudi Arabia pulling off the biggest upset in World Cup history over Argentina. Almost as big as if we didn't talk about the Lakers. Run it back. Starts now. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it back. Run it up, run it back. Yeah. Welcome to Run It Back. Happy Tuesday morning. All of us back in our respective homes. Isn't that cozy? Just in time for the holiday. Sham Sharania, Stadium Insider, Chandler Parsons, TMZ Magnet, and Eddie Gonzalez, co-host of the Etc. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that video yesterday, Chandler, it got a lot of play, and I'm so happy for it. <laughs> My mother sent me that video. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Of That's all when the, you know. Of all, of all the times I've been in the tabloids, she's never once sent me a video. She decided to send me that one. Did she have any <laughs> captions or questions or remarks? She was, she was she was like confused why and like how I was sitting next to it. And I was like, I don't know, mom. <laughs> Leave me alone. Just a lucky boy, mom. I'm just a yeah. lucky boy. <laughs> Roll the dice, mom. Oh, man. All right. Well, we've got World Cup going on, obviously. And that the biggest upset, Saudi Arabia. But we can't talk about that because we've got a lot of NBA the Cleveland Cavaliers, I'm just saying, third straight game won by them. Mitchell and Garland with a combination 55 points beating Atlanta. Chandler, uh, you know we like lists. Is this the best backcourt in the NBA? Oof. I mean, they're up there. They, they are so young. They're so explosive. They can do it all. They're getting their teammates involved. They're, they're so fun to watch. Uh, I mean, there's, there's, still, there's still a couple other... You know, there's still John Bain, there's still DeJounte Murray and Trey Young, there's still Maxie and Harden, but th- these guys are these guys are doing it and, and they're playing so well. And I think Garland got, you know, they each had time to play without one another and they kind of figured it out and they're really clicking together. And and, and this team is deep that they even last night they missed they were missing Dean Wade, they were missing Levert, and they just sub in, you know, Jetty Osman who goes off and they and they have size, they have Lopez and Love coming in that are still valuable assets. So th- this team is 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 uh you know a very, very good team. And these two guys are obviously the head of the snakes and, and they're the main reason why. I mean, there was definitely a lot of question before we got to see them together if it would work. Uh Shams, I want to ask you, how are they so similar? Same, same, but different. How is that? Well, they're similar in that they're both super dynamic. They're they're both on max contracts. They're both unselfish guards. They both can play off the ball, on the ball. What makes Darius Garland so prolific, I think, is that he's able to shoot the ball at a higher level from three-point range. We saw him the other night go for 50 points, 10 to 15 from three-point range. So he's got that in his arsenal. Where they're different, when I talk to people around their organization, is Darius Garland is a free-flowing guard. He really plays off the cuff. Donovan Mitchell, very regimented, has a very strict routine, has a very strict way he plays the game, pick and roll, things like that, where Darius Garland is really free-flowing. So they're able to bounce off each other really well. They both have an unselfishness that I think carries from the fact that they, they want to win and they want this team to succeed at a high level. Yeah, I think their ability both to get it off the dribble is going to be huge for them in the playoffs. I do think they're the best backcourt in the league. They're not... They're going to struggle a little bit defensively, but I, uh, Donovan, he's so athletic and so long that he can make it work. And, you know, DG, he's just going to have to figure it out on that end. But their ability to get off the bounce and both shoot it and drive to the cup makes them more dynamic than, I think, the the backcourse that we mentioned. Even with Atlanta, you know, uh, uh, they're not shooting as well. And then you go with the uh, the Grizzlies duo. Uh, Desmond Bain's not getting off the bounce like that. And if you, even if you go to the Warriors and you look at what Clay is and he keeps telling us that he's still him, but he's he's not what he used to be. I, I definitely had them as the best uh, backcourt duo in the league, and it's going to be scary come the playoffs because that's what a lot of playoff games come to is what can you get in the half court off the bounce? You know, when when you start playing mismatched basketball, who can who can score better than these two guys? We've seen it already from Donovan, and you know I think we'll see it from 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 DG as well. He's only 23 years old. It's it's his time to really make that leap. And you make a good point. And the and the playoffs, these guys, they're tough to scout because they can do so many things. They can get out on the break. They both can go ISO. They both can shoot. And they both have these, you know, pick and roll options with with Allen and Mobley that are just lob threats. So the way they've surrounded these two guards, this this team is is really, really tough to defend because they're so versatile in so many different ways they can score. Well, the, all that being said, Chandler, where would you rank them today in the Eastern Conference? Who the Cavs? Yeah, uh, probably, probably kind of where they are. I would think third. I think the Bucks are still better. I think the Celtics are still better. And then, 
you know, they're right there. I, I tell you that, they, like I said, they're so young and explosive. I don't want to play this team in the playoffs. They have energy. That place gets booming. And, and like I said, they can, they can beat you in many different ways. So I think they're right there. And I think they should be definitely gunning for home court advantage. Everyone agree. Eddie third. Good. Yeah, I mean, they're third right now in the standings, and and that's with DG missing, what, like two weeks with the eye issue. And uh, what I like the most, is I think Chandler is alluding to as well, is that they can put so many different variable variances in their lineups out there. They can play Kevin Love at center if they want and just completely surround those guys with shooting. They can pair him with one of those big centers that they have. They can just go gigantic and and protect the rim and fly (laughs) over the floor on defense. Uh, They got a lot going on and then Dean Wade when they get him back he's been a knockdown shooter Karras has been shooting well this year I'm not the biggest Karras fan but he has been knocking it down so they can do a lot it, it's going to be very interesting to see them in the playoffs people are not going to want to want that matchup and and they got Rubio who hasn't played once this year who was so good for them last year so I love them I like them a lot I like That's it. They're kind point. of the unknown. Yeah the, the unknown it's like Memphis nobody ever wanted to face Memphis in the playoffs you just don't know what you're going to get and that's what makes it exciting. Uh, what was not exciting, heck of a segue, uh, was the Warriors game, playing <laughs> the Pelicans, sitting everybody. At least we saw Steph there, Clay, Wiggins, Draymond, everybody out. They lose by 45 in New Orleans. Obviously, Pelicans fans, and this is an ongoing story year in, year out, but they're upset because they didn't get to see any of the big Warriors stars on the floor. Eddie, I, I hate asking questions like, is it fair? Because we're all adults here, and that word is weird, but... Is it fair for fans to be upset? I mean, it's not fair. You always hear these stories about, yo, I came all the way from Taiwan <laughs> to see Steph Curry or whatever. And and yep. he actually de- dealt with that last year. The girl crying courtside and had to bring her back, That's sign her jerseys and all this stuff. Uh, it's not fair, but it is the, the nature of the game. It just is what it is. The modern science tells us that these guys need to sit a little bit more than they do. Um, and, and the Warriors have been pretty upfront. Like, yo, we're not chasing wins all year. We're dealing with a bunch of stuff. We just won a title. We're going to play it out as slowly as we can and be, get ready for the playoffs. So fair. No, but like nothing's fair. Sorry. Yeah. There you go. There <laughs> yeah, you go. It, it, it definitely sucks as a fan. You know, those guys are fun to watch. Every kid wants to see Steph Curry and Clay Thompson shoot threes from half court. So it sucks, but <laughs> At the end of the day, it's a business. And Bob Myers, Steve Kerr, they don't give a damn. You know, they're going for wins. And honestly, this shows me a lot about them. They were on a back-to-back against Houston and New Orleans. And they played all their guys against the worst team. So this just showed me they were perfectly fine with settling for a one-and-one back-to-back. They just wanted to make sure they got that one. And and they, you know, they played all their guns against Houston and got waxed last night. But this this kind of shows me where the Warriors are at, just making sure they got, you know, one of those games. <laughs> I mean, couldn't you argue at least instead of – I mean, look, I guess in one hand, on the one hand, the Warriors, we wanted to see the young guys sort of play well together so I could see from a strategy point why you would sit them all. But why sit all of them in one game? Why not at least let one guy dress and go out there? Couldn't you do that, Chandler, instead of – all right, everybody – yeah, I mean, you never know who's really banged up and whatnot, but you would think, yeah, let's let's leave, you know, Clay in there with Jordan Poole and finally try and get them meshing together. Let's have Wiggins try and go yeah, to sit them all. You're basically sending a message that we have no chance of winning. You, you can't say <laughs> we're giving these young guys an opportunity. And honestly, I would have seen I would have rather seen them do this the first night against Houston, who they could their backups can probably still beat Houston and then go full strength of against a team like New Orleans. So you're probably going to see down the road so i don't like it i think it was kind of soft i I think that they're sitting everybody uh against the team that's kind of gonna be in your way come playoff time i think it looks weak and you could have just done that the night before against the worst team in the nba so uh (laughs) i I get it it's load management the doctors there's there's people saying it but to rest all of them it's it's not fair to the other guys playing it's not fair to jordan Poole. these guys have going in the game with no chance (laughs) <laughs> with zero chance. Shams, I know this is a concern for the league, the whole load management thing, since since it really got started. Uh, how concerned are they still to this day? I, I think there's definitely a level of concern, especially when it's games on you know th- the TNTs of the world. And I think if we saw last night's be- game being broadcast on TNT, there probably probably would have been even more of, of, of an uproar. But to speak mm-hmm. to Chandler's point, it's interesting that they rested these guys uh, against the Pelicans and not the Rockets, who are the worst team in the league. 
I'm sure there was some sort of analysis being done, though, guys, of the analytics of if we play all these guys against Houston versus New Orleans, we have this amount of chance against this team and that team. That's really how these teams handle sometimes these decisions. So I'm sure some of that went into it for the Warriors as well. Yeah, the analytics were we will probably beat the Rockets fully loaded. We might not beat <laughs> New Orleans fully loaded. So let's, let's take the for sure thing. Oh, I, it's, I hate it. But I also, I, I'm with you. It's like life's not fair. Also, I maybe I'm cynical, but some of those poster boards that say I came all the way from fill in the blank, not buying it. I'm just not buying not it. Buying it. <laughs> no, not buying it. Just, like, just not. I'm not going to do it. Uh, I, the big game tonight that without argument is obviously the Nets and the Sixers, but the Sixers extremely, extremely shorthanded. Embiid with the uh, the foot injury, Shams, do we have a latest on that? Yeah, so it's a left midfoot sprain, and he's going to be out at least two week, uh, two games, and then he'll be e evaluated. But this is an injury Anthony Davis missed several weeks last year with a similar injury. We'll see how the Sixers handle this. Uh, Joel Embiid obviously has dealt with multiple different injuries, shoulder, ankle. He dealt with plantar fasciitis in the offseason. That's why he came to camp uh, not really in, in the best of condition. Um, but the good news for the Sixers is that Tobias Harris will be back uh, most likely in the lineup tonight. He, he's missed the last couple games with a hip issue. But they'll be without Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, James Harden, all with foot issues uh, tonight against Brooklyn. That's huge, Chandler. How much trouble are they in, really? I mean, they're in big trouble. And honestly, anytime I see something related to Joel Embiid's foot, pff, that scares me. It's, uh, I mean, listen, they've been trying to find their rhythm. They have this big three, and now they still aren't able to get on the court at the same time. Now they're going to miss the next couple of weeks together. So it hurts their chemistry. It, it hurts their team. Um, and like I said, Joel has been carrying the load a lot the last couple of games. So I'm not really surprised he's getting banged up, but this is interesting because this reminds me of James last year in Brooklyn, where the big three is just not able to get on the court at the same time a lot. And then by the time they do, it's a little too late. And then, and then we're still talking about how they need, they need more reps. They need more experience together. And this is the, the valuable time that those guys need together. And sure. Joel is going to have big games when they're out and James is out and James is going to play really good when Joel is out, but for them to win a championship and be a contender, they need all three of those guys healthy. They need the Tobias Harris's of the world playing their role and, and they, we just haven't seen it from them yet. So this is, I, I'm a little concerned here because they really have not played together at all. Yeah. They definitely have some issues even beyond their injuries, but th the problem for them is it wasn't like their record was great and they can just spare a month of games. They're eight and eight right now. And they're playing the team that's directly behind them tonight. And it doesn't sound like much, but by the end of the week, it's a quarter of the season. And you're, you're dealing with playoff seeding even this early in the season. And so, yeah, you're missing these guys. You're looking at two weeks without their three best players and wh where that goes from there. Obviously, with Joel, you always worry about the feet, like Chandler said. His rookie year was the right foot. So it, it's not the same thing. It's not some lingering issue from years ago. But, yeah, you, you have history with both feet now for a guy that big who, who moves that nimbly. You need him healthy. You need him healthy, and you always are going to be concerned about that. Um, they're, they're in trouble. They're in a little bit of trouble. And, 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 and then we've talked about them earlier this season about, Hey, is their coach on the hot seat or it's, it's winter go home for them and, and all of that. So yeah, they got, they got a lot of ground to make up while these guys are out. And I don't think they can. Uh, the only thing that could perhaps distract Philly fans tonight is the return of one Benjamin Simmons. That might be the one thing that could distract him, at least for a few minutes. Um, it's his first game back since that trade. They're going to actually see a bid person, provided nothing crazy happens at the last minute. Guys, <laughs> I don't even know why I'm asking this, but I can't wait. <laughs> How do we expect these fans to react to his big return? Chandler, I I'd love to hear what you think. <laughs> Listen, if I'm Ben Simmons, I am <laughs> licking my chops. I finally get to go back, which I'm sure he was terrified before. But now their three best players are out. This is the best case scenario for Ben Simmons to go back there. They're most likely going to win the game. He's going to his ex-girlfriend's house with his two with with, uh, with his new girlfriends, with Kyrie Irving and Kevin two, Durant. Two hot girlfriends. <laughs> fully healthy. It's it's like Ben Simmons. Oh, he's listen. It's gonna be unruly. It is gonna be violent. They are gonna be on his head all game long. But but really, it's it's he's got a better team. He's going into this team that's so banged up. They're gonna win the game whether he has thirty or whether he has 
six. It doesn't matter. So I, I think this is huge for him just to get the monkey off his back, get over this mental block and just put this in the rear view mirror because you know, he went last year and warmed up in the game, but didn't play. And, and he, he's, this game has been circled. I remember when I, when I left Houston, I was playing in Dallas. I wish when I went back to Houston for the first time, Dwight Howard and James Harden were not playing that night. This is the <laughs> perfect setup for him. And, and listen, it's, it's, I think the Nets dominate and I hope Ben Simmons plays good, but if I'm I doc, mean, if I'm doc, I'm going straight to hack shack early on Ben Simmons <laughs> and I am, I'm making him first play. It, <laughs> first play. And if I'm Brooklyn, I'm trying to get him going early just to get this out of the way, but it'll be fun. These games are always fun. The crowd's going to be into it, but you know, I hope he plays well and can just finally get over it and, you know, start hooping again. I mean, I, I just feel like something's going to happen. Shams, is he going to play? Or are we? Is this going to be the rugs oh, going to pull that right play, before the game? I, I swear <laughs> on everything. If he doesn't, Ben play, Simmons I, is playing tonight. Yeah, yeah. He, he he's playing. Tonight. I was I was at I was at the game when he went back and he warmed up pregame. He was on the bench, uh, lo- looking very dapper, very sharp. But he was getting booed even on the bench. Like every time he would stand up, he would do anything on the floor when he was warming up. Like, these fans were already out there pregame ready to boo him. So I can only imagine now that he's going to be actually playing in the game, they were chanting, they were yelling his name. Like, they were they were cursing at him while he was sitting on the bench. So I can only imagine what the environment's going to be like uh, when he's actually going to suit up tonight and play. Yo, haven't hey. seen Ben this year, like, quote-unquote, behind the scenes. He's so cool and just unbothered by life in general i actually think this is all just gonna bounce off him uh now if that turns into a great performance we'll see i i think he's gonna play well i think the nets are gonna want to boost him as best they can they've been nothing but supportive of him uh publicly and on the court all season long uh one thing i will say is and to give myself a shameless plug here we have a new <laughs> episode of etc is coming out today me and Kevin talked about it. I asked him, don't lie to me. Don't tell me this is a regular game. He said, no, it's not. It's absolutely not. It's the same prep. Like, they're not out doing their prep, but it absolutely matters to them. It did last year as well. It was one of the more intense regular season games of the season, and the Nets ran the healthy Sixers out of the building. What I will say is it would be very Brooklyn Nets to just get lit up by Rodison Karoops and George Niang That's and Tobias saying. Harris. That's so what I'm let saying. me not count these eggs like, like mm-hmm. Chandler is. But I will say the Nets will absolutely be turned up and prepared and uh, ready to try to get their guy this win. Chandler, I, it's possible. I, it's not. I think it's complete opposite. <laughs> I think those boos get a lot more quiet once they're down 20 early. I think Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, they have this. They have they have to own this game. They have to get their teammates back who's just been shit on and made fun of for the last year. And this is his homecoming. Like this this game honestly is a bigger game for KD and Kyrie and Miles. Like go out there and dominate and get your boys back and make this as easy as possible for him. And uh, it's again, they, they've all circled it, they've all talked about it. But if they get up early and uh, then it's then it's 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 whatever it's, it's one game and it's over with. And I think that's, what's going to happen. I think they're going to pound them early. And I think Ben Simmons doesn't even play the fourth quarter. I mean, Ch- Chandler's dead on. And it, that, that seemed yeah. to be the approach last year as well. They ran them out the gym and, and that's what they said afterwards. Like, yo, you can't really chant much when you're down 25. Yeah. <laughs> I, I expect the same. I mean, those guys know they need these wins anyway. This is to get the team back to 500. They have a big week going forward. And then they have a long homestand with some really tough games. So they have to get all of these. It's set up for them to win. Everybody's out. You cannot afford to lose this game. Okay. So that all being said, there there are two games tonight, right? There's the actual game scoreboard. But then there's the game within the game where Ben Simmons individually. So let's just say the team does get up big. But Ben Simmons, every time he touches the ball, is straight garbage. Now what, Chandler? Like, what advice are you giving him? Because I think his biggest enemy is his own head. Like, he just yeah. gets in it more than most. So then what? I mean, the biggest deal is that the Nets win tonight. And and again, like, you can say all you want. Ben Simmons wants to personally play well tonight. He wants to he wants to go out there and dominate. But the biggest thing is that they win. And and I think that's all that matters. Because, again, who's, who's laughing now? We won, you lost. And obviously, he's going in against a depleted team. And... <laughs> He shouldn't try and do too much. He shouldn't be taking a lot of shots. I hope he gets an easy bucket early just to kind of get him (laughs) going. But again, like I said, if I'm Philly, 
these guys, they maybe they have bad blood with them. They're going to make it as hard and as uncomfortable as possible. I know if I was on the court, every time this man touched the ball before he shot, I'm fouling him and putting him at the free throw line and making him hear 20,000 people boo him as loud as they ever booed anybody in their life. So I am, I, I, I hope, <laughs> I, I hope that. I hope he, uh, you know, I hope he gets it going early and kind of gets the most of his back. But he's also, listen, he's been playing better the last three games. So this could not be a better situation with his confidence, with the team fully loaded. This should be the last chapter of the Brooklyn Nets drama saga. This is it. Oh my God, what is he's wrong just, with he's you? Just shoot a three it from the logo. Just. Shoot a three from the logo to, from the tip off. Just whatever, you know, go yeah. for it. <laughs> Look, I hope he does. I'm just, I can't buy it yet. I have no history on which to base my confidence in any of this <laughs> happening. Um, but I hope, I hope it does. Are you guys booers, by the way? Maybe not you, Chandler, but as fans, have, have you guys booed? Are you booers? Where are we on that? I Raise your hand. Yes, me. What? Oh, so classy boys. Okay, my bad. All right, let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's let's move on to the Sacramento Kings, the feel-good story of this early NBA season. Although you're right, Eddie, we're almost a quarter of the way through, but a six-game win streak facing Memphis tonight. All right, simple. Eddie, are they this good? Are they actually a good team? They are. They have the highest scoring offense in the league. They have the second highest offensive rating in the league. And you can see why. De'Aaron Fox is playing like an all-star the minus Sabonis has been an all-star. We know how good he is. And they've surrounded those two with shooting, with a ton of sh just absolute snipers. Um, and it, it, it just makes sense. They're running it up. They're pushing the pace. Mike Brown, shout out to Mike Brown. It, it took a yeah. long road for him to get back into that head seat. But he's been ready. He's championship christened. He's done it all in this league. And he has those guys ready. They need to get their defense in order. But that's Mike Brown's specialty. I expect that to come along as the season goes on. But they're they're legit. They're legit what they are. They're they're a lower fourth playoff team, and that's that's absolutely great for the Sacramento. Yeah, look, they're good. They're they're a very good team. They have two absolute stars. They Kevin Herter. I'm so happy for him. He didn't really get to shine in Atlanta. He gets moved in a new opportunity, and and he's balling. Uh, Harrison Barnes has always been solid. Malik Monk off the bench. Uh, Terrence Davis and so this tweet after Boston's loss last night the Sacramento Kings have the number one offense in the NBA like <laughs> what oh, that oh. makes me so happy honestly the fact that we're even talking about them and the fact love anything it. anything positive about the Kings I love like I'm in no shape before no. A, a Kings hater and by the way Arco in the 2000s that place was jumping so Thank like you. I like the fan base is there they are so thirsty for a good team and they finally got it and i am so stoked for them yeah I, I agree with eddie like shout out mike brown it was down to mike brown and mark jackson for this head coaching job in sacramento and i think there was a lot of thought that mark jackson uh was in the lead at one point but they went with mike brown and you saw what he was a part of in golden state and everywhere he's gone that first year that first those first couple years there's a level of success there, a culture, defensive identity that Mike Brown has instilled in Cleveland and L.A. and now in Sacramento. So you're seeing that now start to take form. They've got a good roster. Kevin Herter, Terrence Davis, they've got snipers around Fox and Sabonis. And so when they traded Tyrese Halliburton, there were a lot of question marks within this organization. Like, what are they doing? And I think just to see this team's vision now, it's starting to make some sense. Look, I love this Mike Brown love. I think we're all fans, but can we put the credit where it's actually due? The beam of light, okay? That is obviously what has changed the entire fortune of this team. Do we love it? Do we hate it, Eddie? The be It's the bean team. <laughs> uh, look, I love it. The Sacramento, the, the, the culture of the city is so built around the Kings and ingrained in that arena and everything that arena represents. So, yes, let's do a bright purple shining Tough. light it's fine i know you know my friends my family all in the city they're embracing it so yeah I like the beam enjoy it do something uh, we joked about it like yo they're only gonna like that thing six times this year <laughs> uh they deleted it six times in a row so shout out to them I'm, I'm all for it just in just have fun out there it's such a simple shtick it makes sense now that i'm looking at it right chandler like it's hey, organic, just put a light up it's there. clean, I right? like it. Yeah, and you know, it's, their thing. it's their thing. It's bringing this team, the city together. You know what? If I'm them, I'm having a Legends night where I have C-Webb, I have Bibby, I have Divot, and they're all hitting the beam after the next win. Like, I am I am bringing this community so much more together. I am. Uh, they are They are going right now. They are balling, and I. It, there's excitement in Sacramento now. Listen, it's still kind of early. Like, they haven't really sure. done anything yet, but they're on the right path. Yeah, I'll keep say the this. Legends on the court. 
and in the <laughs> stands, not in the front office. I think that was one of Vivek's biggest mistakes as a new owner, but now he's got a real front office, a real staff there, and they're reaping the benefits of that. Somebody should get a raise because I'm sure the initial pitching of, hey, why don't we just put a big light on the ceiling was like, <laughs> shut up, that's stupid. And now look, like whoever that person is, raise, raise them. That's all I'm saying. Uh, time for a quick break. When we come back, T-Wolves fans are booing? What? Rudy Gobert ain't shooting his shot. And we got a CP, but not that one in Phoenix. We'll be back. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up. Seventeenth time in Gobert's career that he finished a regular season game with zero field goal attempts. Uh, last time it happened was against the Timberwolves. How bizarre is that? Shams, uh, look, they won the game last night. It wasn't easy. Obviously, there was some, I don't know, fans on their own team booing, which is always a little bit bizarre. What is going on there in Minnesota? Yeah, I mean, I th four straight wins. Anthony Edwards is actually playing the best basketball of the season so far. Um, but you can just tell there's – with Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns, the fit level there. And Rudy Gobert, zero field goal attempts, speaks after the game about the fans booing. And um, and uh, to me, this is a Midwest fans. I mean, shout out to Midwest fans. They're very, very <laughs> engaged. And they'll let their team know about it. Philly fans, uh, New York fans, all, all kind of the same ilk. But just trying to figure out how these guys can continue to play with each other. Anthony Edwards, we've seen speak out a few times during the course of the year uh, about playing style. So I I'm curious from a player perspective, when, when you have a high-priced team and you're, on, you're, you're one of those high-priced player channels, like how do you manage those expectations when you're a player like Rudy Gobert, a max contract guy on this team, uh, pretty much like how do you handle those expectations fan interactions and and you know when you're not having a great night <laughs> yeah uh i was in the same situation when i went to memphis i was on a big max deal um i was hurt it took me a while to get going and i remember the first time i i got to the free throw line i missed my first free throw of the season and the home crowd was booing me and it, it affected <laughs> me and, and honestly like you know, fans obviously don't see all the work that goes in that players are putting in, but also at the same time, like I was a fan one time in the, the nineties booing T-Mac when he played bad for the Orlando magic. So like <laughs> you, I totally, you got to understand it. It's never a good idea to get into it with your home crowd, but I did the same thing. I did media afterwards. I said, look, I'll treat every home game. Like it's a road game. Like if you guys don't want, if you guys don't want to boo me, like if you want to boo me, like fine. So, and that was, that was the worst thing you could do. Cause then like, they're not going to forget that you want them on I your know. side. And, but also like Rudy Gobert, sh like, listen, he should be catching the ball and dunking it. It's not like he's getting a lot of looks anyway. And he, by the way, he hit huge free throws for them last night to kind of seal the game for them. So you never want to get in there with your home crowd, especially as a new player, new to the city. Like that's not a good look. You just keep your head down and play. But I feel where he's coming from because this team it is going to take time. They are starting to win some games. He is new, but those are fans. That's they, they buy a ticket. They, feel entitled. It can do whatever they want. Damn right. Yeah. You know, we, right. we know that Rudy's an emotional guy. We've seen him cry about all-star spots and all kind of stuff. Wow. And, and he, <laughs> even, even in international play, you see him kind of like, you know, he wears his heart on his sleeve and look, that's cool and all, but I'm not a fan of the boo. Like I get what it does. I'm more of like a well-timed heckle. Like just, just yell oh, at Rudy. What? Well, well, it's quiet that he hasn't even taken a shot. Just let him know. I always well get a crack out of those because every once in a while a player look up like, oh, you heard me. Oh, okay. All right, good. <laughs> so, yeah, now I'm going to never stop. Let, let them know. Let them hear it. <laughs> it is true, though. I feel like you can't, I mean, you can't let them know that they hurt your feelings because that's, that's if there's any bully in them at all, that's just more weakness that they they sniff out. And fans, as much as they hate, they want you to play well. They want they want to win. And if you're not producing for their team, they're going to let you hear about it. That's just, that's part of the game. That's part of the business and, and, like I said, athletes get that. I just think we do get a little insecure sometimes and we let it get to us and we say stuff that we probably shouldn't say. And he's going to regret saying this, but hopefully, you know, <laughs> hopefully, you know, next home game, he balls out and they support him and they kind of grow from there. But you, it's never a good idea to get into it with your home crowd, at least. The away crowd, yeah, who cares? Go out of Yeah, away crowd, you have to. But you know what? Yeah. His first shot is going to be so sarcastically cheered. So uh, have fun with that. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's going to be good. Shams, I know we're going to say goodbye to you, but I swear I'm telling you right now, if you send out a tweet at all today that says Ben Simmons last minute is not playing, I will oh, wow. come to Chicago and find you. Okay? <laughs>
just that's a threat. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just waiting. Thanks, Sean. I hope that doesn't happen. I really hope oh, that doesn't happen. <laughs> I hope so too. I'm looking forward to this game. Uh, we'll we'll chat tomorrow. But you guys, we got a little. You buying that? That's up right now. And we start with Bubble, which is my favorite thing to say. All right, last five games, he's averaging just over 17 points a game, 10 rebounds. Eddie, are you buying him as most improved in the league? Uh, absolutely not. We're just going to name this the Lori Markkinen Award. He's Thank running you. away with this. I All love star Lori Markkinen. All star. All star Lori. Had a great game last night. The the Jazz killed our parlay. We'll talk about that later. But had a oh, great God. game last night in LA. Uh, it's Lori's award. I I, I love that ball is, is getting a chance and 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 making the best of it. And it looks like the guy we saw in the All His Life mixtapes five years ago. But uh, yeah, let's be real. This is Laurie Markkinen's award. <laughs> yeah, listen, this guy, he's fun to watch. He's got crazy lengths. I like when he hits shots like that, he he has a chance to be a pretty good player in this league. But um, no, no, no way that he wins this award. <laughs> okay, fair. Maybe we just do like top five, perhaps on the most improved list. But I'm with you on the Markkinen thing. I, I don't think that changes. Uh, how about you, Chandler? Yuta Watanabe right now leading the league in threes. Are you buying that he's one of the league's best shooters eddie stop stop nodding your head before he even answers the question let me, let me tell you something let me tell you something if his name was watatanovich and he was this european shooter <laughs> we would be talking that he's one of the best shooters in the league but unfortunately because he's not I, people aren't giving him the respect that he deserves and listen he is he going to keep up this clip shooting that high of a percentage probably not but you know what he's taking good shots so it's going to help his percentage he's not one of these players that are going to force shots he's not shooting off the dribble he's not getting guarded most nights uh you know people are double teaming kd and it's kind of a swing swing to him in the corner and and he's knocking him down can i say he's an elite shooter coming off screens drawing up plays for him no but in the, within the flow of an offense with kevin durant and kyrie irving getting most of the attention he is a great great asset to have on the floor shooting the ball like this i'm all in on you to i can't help it i'm sorry we not to plug the podcast again but me and kevin talked about it on the show <laughs> he just the way he's grinded his way back into a rotation in the league he's playing on a non-guaranteed deal he's already had a few stops that didn't quite work out he's most famous for getting boomed on by anthony edwards one of the best dunks we've ever seen but you he's playing within the offense he's doing well he's such an energy guy I got to see the experience in person the other day. He they ran a pin down top of the key curl for him as a as a heat check because he hit three threes in a row. Fifty seven percent is a lot, but yeah, he's getting great shots on that team and he's knocking them down. He's playing well. I'm all it in on you. Yeah, and it. it couldn't it couldn't be happening to a better dude too. Like this guy's. I had him in Memphis. He's just such a good dude, hardworking, like. He's honestly the type of guy that's just happy to be in the NBA. So the fact that he's performing like this is fantastic. I like hearing that. These are all this is all positive. Uh, we go to Phoenix now. The other CP campaign. He's uh, averaging a little over twenty a game, six assists as a starter. Question though, Eddie, CP three is eventually going to come back. Should he remain a starter though, Cameron Payne? Yeah. Look, we 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 OD with the positivity. I'm a little negative right now. Yes. Uh, CP, when you have to play a certain style and he's on the on the court, the offense is just more dynamic with campaign. I, I know that you, there's this kind of stigma of him as a backup player, and it's hard to always make that transition. Chris Paul is a Hall of Famer. He's one of the best point guards of all time. But the current Chris Paul campaign is just a better player. He's just a more dynamic player, and he gets their offense popping a little more. It's a lot less just standing watching campaign dribble and always go right and take a mid-range shot. Um, I've been saying this for quite some time and sounding like a madman. I thought in the playoffs a few years back, they were really explosive with him uh, coming off the bench. But yeah, I, I think it's time. And I think they have the opportunity now. And Monty Williams is respected enough to actually make that call. Uh, I think at some point this season, it does happen. Scandalo. What do you think, Chandler? I mean, could it happen? Yeah, maybe. I, I honestly don't see it happening. I think, you know, CP3, this, he's still the floor general. He's still Chris Paul. He's still, you know, one year removed from, you know, having a really good season with the, with the same exact team. Uh, campaign is, you know, he's great when CP's out, but he's also a great spark plug off the bench. And and and, and whatever capacity it is, they're going to need this guy to do what he's doing. But I, I just can't see them bringing Chris Paul off the bench when he comes back. I think he's the starting point guard, at least for the end of this season. 
I mean, there have been some big names that have come off the bench in the last few years. There's something to be said for aging. It happens to all of us. Uh, Sticking with the bench theme, Utah Jazz right now in this league have the highest scoring bench at 844 points. Um, You know, it's crazy, Chandler, but are you buying that they're the NBA's deepest team? I mean, listen, they are extremely, extremely deep with Sexton and Beasley. They have guys that can fill it up. And listen, are they like, I still like Boston. I still like their, I think they have a better bench, but these guys, they can kind of plug in. They're, they, they can shoot the ball. They defend, they play hard. It's it's weird because their bench is almost as good as their starting lineup in a way. Like <laughs> they, they don't really miss a beat. And these teams that struggle, it's when they kind of, their starters come out they kind of get that seven to eight minute blow and then the team kind of goes on a run so this is this is an interesting team because yeah i, I mean they're up there and and they have like malik beasley is just absolutely balling and their depth to me I, I think boston is but i think they're right there number two what a luxury what a luxury to be able to have your second unit come out and not really skip a beat right i love it jordan, i love it jordan clarkson former six man of the year I mean, yeah. I'm just saying, and their coach, because we're gonna we're sticking with the Jazz, 12 and seven atop the Western Conference. Uh, I kind of hope that sticks, Eddie. But are you buying Will Hardy as Coach of the Year? Yeah, absolutely. Look, we our first episode of this season, we spent about 10 minutes saying the Jazz stink and they're gonna be the worst <laughs> team in the league. Uh, the youngest Experts. coach in the NBA. It's it, they're moving on from a long time incumbent. The Jazz have only had a few coaches in their in their time as the organization. They know what they're doing when they pick their guys out there. I, I buy it. It's, if they make the playoffs, it's his to lose. There's, there's the only person even close is Joe Mazzulla, but you can tell yourself, hey, they were great anyway. We slotted them in. I think it's his award to lose. I think it's an organizational choice. They got some hardware on the way if they want to keep this up and really play this out. Um, but no, he's great. He's 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 had put those guys all in positions to win, even going deep into their bench with Taylor or Kelly Olynyk or. Uh, you know, Malik Beasley, who, who can give you 30 off the bench. Uh, they're just a well put together team and, and a well oiled machine at this point. Yeah, I agree. And it's, it's the surprise factor is what does it for me. I thought this team would be tanking and I thought they would be horrible. And listen, they're a good team. Like we just talked about, their depth is great. Their shooting is great. They got bigs that can space the floor. And they have guys like Lori Marketing who are playing like an absolute all star. So yeah, I do think I think this is his award to lose. If they take a huge slide here and they start doing what we initially thought they were going to do, then obviously not. But if they continue anywhere near this pace, I think it's his award to lose. And the pop tree goes on forever. Uh, taking a quick break. When we come back, will Wimbenyama's NBA 2K rating be higher than Giannis's? This the rating talk is going to be all the boys. Uh, and should World Cup rules be applied? To the NBA. Run it back returns shortly. So is Victor Wembayana 99 in French 2K? <laughs> is there is French 2K? Is That's there... going to be interesting. Are you he already is... rating him? Or what? Oh, we have definitely talked about that guy. I mean, he is the freak NBA 2K player, right? A 7 4 guy that can do everything. He's KD with five extra inches. Like, I don't know how he's going he's gonna to break our game. <laughs> That, of course, Ronnie 2K uh, with Rich Eisen. He's going to break our game. Eddie, what should his rating be? So I looked it up. The Reddit guys tell me that the highest <laughs> rookie rating of all time in 2K belongs to two players, John Wall and Kyrie Irving, were both 81 overall. Hmm. I'm going to go with like an 85. I'm going to go with something ridiculous because of all the attributes he has. He shoots a three. He's going to have a high block rating. He's going to have a high handle rating. He's going to have all these like variables about his size and his length and all that. I'm going to go 85. And, and, and I guess it's at, I'm really expecting him to hit the league running. So Ugh. yeah, I, I get it. I mean, I'm so nervous for this kid Chandler. Uh, did you, did you make a note of your ratings? Did you care? Did it make you angry yeah. or happy? <laughs> no, honestly, I was never a big video game guy. And honestly, this guy, Ronnie, he kind of, he bothers me for some reason. He's, <laughs> he's, he's He's getting too big for his own britches. Um, I never really, I was more of like a golden eye, James Bond golden eye guy. My rating Ooh. in that would be elite. Yeah. Elite. Um, Fair enough. It would, it would, I think it'd be a little strange if he's anything higher than like an 85. Listen, but he's going to be high. He's going to be the highest rookie ever because of what we just talked about. We've never seen anybody like this. Like, how do you rank a guy who's dominated every level he's played at, who's seven, six? 
who can do everything. So it's, it's interesting. I think it's going to take some time. You can't just throw him in the nineties before he plays one possession in the NBA. Um, his weakness, I guess would be his strength. And, you know, like, look at Chet, this guy, who knows what's going to happen to this guy. So you can't just throw him in there with such a high ranking before he does anything. But we've also never talked about anybody. Like we talk about this kid. So yep. who knows? I don't know what really goes into it, but I'm assuming he's going to be the highest ranked rookie ever. This just worries me so badly. I this is so much hype. Not no mere mortal can live up to this kind of hype. And I feel like we're kind of screwing this kid over before he even it's like you meet someone on a dating app and you exchange messages for a month and then you finally go out on the date and it's like it can't live up to it. It just can't. And I I, I worry about this kid for that very reason. <laughs> Shut up, Eddie. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> a dating app, <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> All, all of them, the, all the analogies. All of them. <laughs> I was gonna go with like a baby bird flying out the nest. I'm a little worried about it, but dating right? that, hey, you might, you might. I right. just worry. I and I also wonder if other players will be. You know, you said the two rookies before uh, Kyrie and and who was it? Kyrie and John Wall. John Wall. Uh, yeah, like, will they be disrespected, or does anyone even care? Is that just such a new thing to care about your rating? Yeah, I don't uh-huh. think they'll Clay be Thompson disrespected. Cared. Yeah, Clay Thompson point. definitely cared. I don't think That's, so. I, like, I this guy's been talked about for now quite some time. I think I don't think they'll care. I just guys want to dunk on him. him luck. That's what they yeah, want to oh, do. <laughs> you think? I can't wait to see who the first guy to do it is. That's what I'm waiting yeah. for. Um, we didn't get into this earlier because we, we we wanted to save it because I love it so much. Donovan Mitchell accidentally stole the tenth rebound from Evan Mobley last night. Would have been uh, it would have been his double double, and he immediately <laughs> apologizes, Chandler. And it seems like an honest mistake, but are you aware? Are you that aware in game that a teammate's Here's about a, to do something like that? What's weird about this is maybe for a triple double, like I, that's when I first saw <laughs> yes. it. Yes. I was you. thinking this is for a triple double or even a quadruple double, but for a Aww. double double for a big guy to make a deal like that. I don't think it was obviously on purpose, but obvious. And also, I don't think it was a big deal. It's a double double. It's like, who cares? <laughs> I had the same reaction. I'm like, why are people freaking out? He had 11 points. Like, yo, just get the ball and take it to half court. You you won. It's cool. Yeah. I read it as though the team really genuinely likes each other. That's how I read that reaction. Uh, yeah, still and- apologizing in the locker room. A half hour later and promised to pick up the next dinner chat. Good Lord. What a friendship. Bro, come on, guys. <laughs> Come on. We're trying to go viral at this point. What are we doing? <laughs> I don't know. That's I don't know. Uh, it's World Cup time. Obviously, the entire world is watching. So it's a it's an edition of Convince Me where we share that. Eddie, you're up. <clears throat> NBA refs should hand out yellow and red cards to players who commit fouls. <laughs> I'm going to go, yeah. This is hilarious to me every time in soccer. Like, I, it's all arbitrary. It's like that foul was extra hard. So here's a yellow. Oh, you already <laughs> had what yellow last week. So here's a red. But <laughs> I just like this a little bit more than text. The way they're giving out text, though, we're going to be playing three on three, messing with these refs yeah. and giving out red cards. Fair. So, but I like it. Let's try it. Let's make it universal. All right. That's one I, I like. I think I'm going to like a lot of these today, Chandler. They're, they seem like good ones. All right. This one, whew, Chandler. Just like in the World Cup, if an NBA player is ejected from the game, he cannot be replaced, meaning his team now must play one man down. Oof. I mean, this this is going to depend a lot on coaching, I guess. This is going to uh, – no team is going to win four on five. So, th- again, like Eddie just said, this is going to have to be a level of – this must. it better be a punch thrown if someone's getting ejected if, if they can't. <laughs> If they if they can't replace him with a player because oh. the, the NBA is too too talented, the guys are too skilled. You can't play four on five. So unless it's something major, like nowadays you get ejected for accidentally swinging for a block and hitting a guy in the head on accident, the guy would be ejected, <laughs> and the team would get dubbed by twenty four on five. So they would have to they would have to up the level of hostility for the actual ejection. In my opinion, that's fair. That is fair. And there are some guys that you know are probably more easily baited. Um, that you would just focus on, which yeah. that would make fun for the fans. Uh, Eddie, okay, I love this one. If an NBA game is tied <laughs> after two overtimes, each team's got to shoot three shooters to take three point shots. Then they alternate shots until <laughs> one team shooters have all missed. It's basically an awesome shootout. What say you? Yo, know, I would add this. We need like <laughs> closeouts. I mean, because because in a shootout in soccer, there's an actual goalie. You're not just kicking it into the empty Fair. net. We need closeouts to make this a little bit harder. 
But I'm all for this. Like, yo, I was telling Kevin, his, he, he owns a piece of the Philly Union. They lost the MLS Cup in penalty kicks. I was like, you would actually die if you lost an NBA game like this. Oh. I want to see it. I think it'd be hilarious. Also, the Warriors have an absolute unfair advantage. So that's let's a, see That's it. a great point, actually. They really do. I, yeah, you know I what? Like that, that, I like this a lot. I, I like Literally. it. Three-point contest, dunk contest, one-on-one, about anything. I like it. I like it too. And that MLS cup was one of the best things I've seen in quite some time. And I usually don't like shootouts. Chandler convinced me that just like in the world cup, NBA team should be allowed up to five substitutions a game, but no more than five. Yeah. You know what? This would be great for fans because they go to see the star players play and this would eliminate them coming out of the game. And there were, you would see more of the star players play like, just like you saw Christian Pulisic last night, he didn't come out of the game. Neither could Luca or Ooh. neither could KD. So it would help. I think the, the, the level of talent in the league, but also it, it would, you'd struggle with the depth and, and like teams, like we just talked about, like the jazz and the Celtics having these deep rotations, it would eliminate that. So this would be fun because yeah. all the best players would be on the court for the most time. But my goodness, load management would be a nightmare, wouldn't it? Yeah. They would just miss so many games. <laughs> that one might be a harder one to do. I think the other ones could work um, in a perfect world, but that one might be tough. Ooh. Okay, we're taking a break. Um, coming up next, an absolute guaranteed parlay to never hit ever. If you figured it out by now, you should be betting against us <laughs> when Run It Back returns. We're awful. <laughs> Oh, if you've been watching, uh, you know we're not good at these. This <laughs> that, that basically explains it all right there in a nutshell. Our parlays. It's an on-the-fly four-leg parlay. We start with Eddie, as we often do. Your first two <laughs> legs are what? I'm going with Kevin Herter over two and a half threes. We talked about him a lot today. Absolute sniper. I like that. Uh, it's going to be fun. Yeah. It's a little kind of like easy. I feel like that's low. I'm going the Kings Grizzlies over. Uh, Kings, hmm. like, as we mentioned, highest scoring team in the league. Grizzlies are actually also top ten. I'm not expecting a lot of defense tonight. I think those two are going to hit Chandler, so no pressure. Go ahead. Yours are. I like both. I like both of those. My first one is Ben Simmons triple double. Listen, he's got yeah. everything to prove. He's playing against a depleted team. I'm not asking him to have thirty. Have 10 points, dude, and the rebounds and assists should come easy. Scared money really? don't make money, Chandler. I love it. Yes. I love come it. Let's on. And, and the odds here. We got it. We got this at solid odds. <laughs> yeah. This is, we were <laughs> and early on second, this. <laughs> yeah. Then my second ones, I love the Kings. I like them to keep the winning streak going. Minus two at Grizzlies. Jaws out. Bane's out. I, I love the Kings. I love That's that. That's pretty good. And uh, Eddie's picks from the same game. So we got we got some action tonight. And I hate how good I feel about this. I hate how good you feel too, because it's foolish. Uh the three of the I think three of the four for sure are gonna hit. I the Ben Simmons one scares me. And when we did plus that, it was 5, plus five thousand. Yeah. So I know well, I that's why do you know why, Chandler? Because it's virtually impossible that that's gonna happen. <laughs> The odds have um, dropped, unfortunately. I think it's plus a thousand now, which is still why would they pretty drop? amazing. Is it because we, we, we were we gonna blow it up? Simmons? We have too much sway. We had, oh. <laughs> we had too much that sway. Is, I, I blame my because they know what I know, Michelle. They know this kid's going off tonight. Okay. I feel like <laughs> this might be the worst one we've ever put. But when we did it, the 20 bucks was gonna win you five grand. Which I honestly, if I lived in a state that allowed it, oh, I swear I would put that 20 bucks. In. Eddie, put 20 bucks down for me on this one. I'm, because if for some bizarre I'm in Jersey, reason. I'm putting my money down. Thank I'm, you. I'm going to up right now. I'll my Venmo money down. you I, when I win. I'm, when, when Dylan Brooks scores 45 tonight, it just absolutely ruins this. I'm going to. I'm going to lose it. I'm going to break realize what, You realize what's going to happen, right? The only thing that's going to hit tonight is the Ben Simmons <laughs> triple-double. <laughs> all I know is I'm Herter. muting all of you guys on the thread tonight. I don't want to hear it. Herter that's shoots do one of eight. Herter. Yeah. God, please Herter don't be the one. Uh, we will be back tomorrow tonight. because tomorrow is Wednesday. Enjoy the games tonight. Ben Simmons, you best play. See y'all tomorrow.